So you may be wondering to yourself, Grandmasters come out this season, what am I gonna use? I really don't know. Well, you may be pretty frustrated. And in today's video, I'm gonna fix that. Yo, what's up Guardians, it's Next Up Nova, and Grandmasters are only a few days away, which means it's time to talk weapons and loadouts. In today's video, we're gonna go over some of the best weapon options for Grandmaster Nightfalls per weapon type this season. Some weapon types here will not include any options because of several factors, including a lack of anti-champion mods for that weapon type. Before we begin, let's mention this season's artifact anti-champion mods. Unstoppable Hand Cannon, Overload Scout Rifle, Anti-Barrier Bow, Anti-Barrier Pulse Rifle, Overload Auto Rifle slash SMG, and Unstoppable Grenade Launcher. Let's get straight into it and start with Linear Fusion Rifles. Firstly, Arbalest. This is without a doubt the best weapon for Grandmasters in the game, being a Linear Fusion Rifle with Anti-Barrier and the Great Ammo economy. Next, Cataclysmic. The roll on this is fourth times the charm slash bait and switch. This is the best PvE heavy linear fusion rifle with the bait and switch perk, and it packs a punch in Grandmasters at range. Lastly, Taipan 4FR with triple tap and firing line. This is a great beginner player option if you do not have Cataclysmic. You can acquire the pattern for this weapon by completing the deep sight quest at the relic conduit in the enclave. Moving on to grenade launchers. Firstly, Wither Horde. This is extremely strong this season with unstoppable GL and weak and clear, and also also the sustained overtime damage. Next, Anarchy. Also having unstoppable grenade launcher and weak and clear, this is an incredibly powerful option if you do need something else to use. Anarchy dominated the GM meta long before it got nerfed and people really stopped using it, yet it is still one of the most powerful grenade launchers for Grandmasters even after the nerf. Next we have Salvager Salvo slash Forbearance with Ambitious Assassin and Chain Reaction. Now Salvager Salvo is a breach grenade launcher whereas Forbearance is a wave frame grenade launcher. So whichever one fits your preference. Lastly, Ignition Code with Slide Shot and Vorpal slash Danger Zone. You can pick between those two perks. Now Ignition Code with Slide Shot allows you to just shoot, slide, and reload your magazine without having to do the full reload. This means you can literally spam grenade launcher shots over and over again, which is really good for taking out champions and also just blinding enemies in the area if you do use blinding grenades. Moving on to Scout Rifles, we have Polaris Lance with the perfect fifth shot perk. This creates a large explosion and does a very massive amount of damage, and it also has a lot of range, so it's great for sitting in the back. Next, we have Night Watch which is a very, very good option that you can get from the New Light campaign. Works well for long range engagements and it also overload scout rifle being a mod. Lastly, for the scout rifles, we have Tarnished Metal with Demolitionist and Vault Shot. This is the only scout rifle in the game currently that can roll with these two perks. It also destroys large groups of enemies and can easily stun champions with the overload scout rifle mod this season. Now moving on to pulse rifles, Revision Zero will be getting its last catalyst on Tuesday, which will be fourth times the charm. Now you can use fourth times the charm and Vorpal weapon on this pulse rifle, and it is going to be extremely versatile. Also, Anti-Barrier Pulse is a mod for the other pulses I'm about to mention. Next, we have Insidious with Rapid Hit and Adaptive Munitions. This is earned from completing the Vow of the Disciple raid, and it can also be crafted with five Red Border Insidious. Now this is very, very good, and it packs a very big punch on the enemies. Lastly, and my favorite of the three for the Pulse Rifles, is the BXR Battler with Demolitionist and Incandescent. This thing is very, very good for getting your grenade really quickly and deleting groups of ads in in-game content. I highly, highly recommend using this if you do have one. Our next category is Bows. Firstly, the Under Your Skin Bow from Season of the Risen with Elastic String, Compact Arrow Shaft, Archer's Tempo, and Explosive Head. This is very, very good for quickly recharging your bow and killing tons of enemies in large groups. Next, we have probably the most underrated Grandmaster weapon right now, Wish Ender. This is very, very good because you can one-shot barrier shields, and it's also very good for tracking targets. Next, take use Divination. This is an incredibly powerful weapon for taking out large groups of adds and doing an insane amount of damage with the hip fire and ADS combo. Lastly, we have La Monarch. La Monarch is really, really good for just straight burning champions, and also it has a lot of versatility. Moving on to rocket launchers. So, Galahorn with wolf backgrounds is really, really good when paired with two other legendary rockets, as it does give all the rockets wolf backgrounds, which is very, very good for baking the boss and baking champions extremely easily and quickly. Now we have what I believe to be the strongest rocket launcher in the game right now, which is Hothead. The broad role of Hothead is Demolitionist and Explosive Light. Hothead will absolutely bake champions and bosses, especially with Galahorn paired with it. Now for Trace Rifles, I would only recommend Divinity for Trace Rifles as it is Overload intrinsically 
and there are no mods for this weapon type. Now for sidearms as well, I also wouldn't recommend running any sidearms this season, as there are no champion mods for sidearms this season specifically, and they're also very, very strong on short range combat. Moving on to sniper rifles. Firstly, Succession with Reconstruction and Firing Line slash Vorpal. This weapon can be crafted from the Deepstone Crypt Raid, and it's an incredibly solid option if you are in need of a primary sniper. Next is the strongest of the three snipers on this list, Izanagi's Burden. Now, if you don't know, Izanagi's Burden has a perk called Honed Edge, where you can basically do a slower reload animation to combine all four of your shots in the magazine into one for a massive damage burst. Now also with the catalyst, it increases the damage of this. I would highly recommend this if you do need something to quickly just absolutely melt champions instantly. Lastly on the list is a really good option for those of you who don't do raids or anything, Thoughtless with Overflow and Firing Line. This is from Season of the Risen, and it is a very, very solid sniper, again if you don't have a succession. Moving on here to hand cannons. Firstly, Fatebringer with Explosive Payload and Firefly. This is earned from the Vault of Glass Raid, and you can also get it from completing the Master Templar Challenge as well for the Adept version with the Intrinsic Explosive Payload Firefly roll from Destiny 1. I would highly recommend this as a primary hand cannon if you do like them. Next is Zowley's Bane with Explosive Payload and Incandescent. Since they did recently fix the hand cannon champion mod this season, that means that Zowley's Bane is officially one of the best options. Now, this thing can absolutely melt huge areas of adds, especially in strikes with weaker adds, such as Thrall. Now, lastly on the list, we have an old trusty option called Ariana's Vow. Now, this has intrinsic anti-barrier, and it has been one of the most solid, reliable options for Grandmaster Nightfalls for a few years, ever since they've came out. Now, Ariana's Vow being barrier also means you cannot apply any other champ mods to it. Moving on to auto rifles, the Amit AR2 with stats for all and incandescent is an extremely strong option and packs a hard punch on very large groups of enemies, and also has a very good reload with stats for all. Next is Come to Pass with Genesis and Adaptive Munitions. Now, now, adaptive munitions allows this weapon to burn all types of shields even if it doesn't match the energy type. Now lastly on this list is a returning weapon called Seven Seraph Carbine with a new perk called Target Lock with fourth times the charm and Target Lock being the god roll. This means that the longer you aim at the target and shoot at it, the more damage it's going to do. So I would definitely recommend this as an option against champions. Now here's some submachine gun options. Firstly, Callus Mini Tool with Threat Detector and Incandescent. And you may be asking me, Nova, why are you not saying unrelenting? Well, in Grandmaster Nightfalls, a lot of times you aren't gonna get more than one kill in the magazine, which means that you're not gonna be proccing unrelenting very consistently. So I would recommend Threat Detector for the higher stat boost when you're near enemies. Same situation with Threat Detector here with the Ikelos SMG with Threat Detector and Volt Shot. This is extremely good if you use an ARC subclass as well because it synergizes really well with the Jolting. Now lastly on this list, we have a primary SMG called Submission with Subsistence and Demolitionist. This is another pretty good option, but again, I would personally prefer Callus Mini Tool or Ikelos SMG, but if you do use something in the secondary that you're gonna be maining, I would definitely use Submission as an overload option. Now moving on, here are a couple fusion rifle options that you can definitely try out. We have Riptide with Field Prep and Chill Clip. Now Riptide shoots really, really quickly and Chill Clip means that whenever you hit the target two times, it will freeze. Now this is great against Barrier Champs because whenever the Barrier Champs freeze, they no longer can pop a shield. Another good fusion rifle option is Deliverance with Demolitionist and Chill Clip. Now Deliverance with Demolitionist and Chill Clip is really good, again, just like Riptide because of the ability to freeze Barrier Champions and also the speed. This is earned from the Vow to Disciple Raid and can also be crafted. Now as for Glaives, there are no Glaive mods for the season, so I wouldn't recommend any at this moment. Also along with that, for shotguns, there are no shotgun anti-champion mods this season, so I wouldn't recommend in any of those as well. Now, as for machine guns, Thunderlord is a very solid option if you need range and overload. I wouldn't really recommend any other machine guns right now as their design doesn't really fit the GM environment too well. Now, lastly, for swords, I really would not recommend running any swords. However, you could use Lament if you wanted to for anti-barrier, but again, in most Grandmaster settings, you don't wanna push enemies too hard or else you will get absolutely destroyed. Now that just about wraps up our video on the best weapons to use in Grandmaster Nightfalls by weapon type. If you found this helpful and enjoyed the video, would appreciate you guys subscribing to the channel and turning notifications on as well as leaving a like. Also comment any other videos GM wise you'd like to see from me as I will be focusing quite a bit on Grandmaster content. Also check out my Twitch live stream as starting Tuesday, we will be doing Grandmaster Nightfall helps, helping you all get Wendigo, Hung Jury and all the loot every single day. 
I'll see you all next time, and peace.